Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're doing our Condo Bowl November recap. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the 10 games. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. How do you guys think of the 10 games and everything like that? So I hope you guys do enjoy. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's start with the first game we got here. It is Venezuela 1 and Brazil 1. Venezuela, man. Fantastic. They continue the unbeaten streak at home, and it's a valuable point for them. And in my opinion, this is kind of like a game where... It was a bit of a 50-50 game throughout the game, you know. I thought Brazil were better in the first half. They dominated the first half. They created so many chances. They just couldn't convert. Um, Rafinha scored the free kick there. A beautiful free kick there. And for Venezuela, they just didn't really do much in the first half besides the Rondon chance. Rondon should have capitalized those chances, especially from Ederson making those mistakes out the back with his ball playing ability. But he just wasn't great, you know. Um, and yeah, but the second half, though, Venezuela showed up. They scored the equalizer. Segovia, really, you have to give it, you have to give it a lot of credit to uh, but it's up making that halftime change, which was a brilliant change. And then, obviously, the big talking point is Vinicius Jr. Vinicius Jr. missing that penalty. Because you just knew that he had scored that penalty. A lot of the critics would have been silenced. A lot of people would be given appreciation, but he missed the penalty. And that's just how the game ended, man. That's just how the game ended. Because I actually kind of feel bad for Vinicius. I actually thought he was decent in the first half. He was good in the first half. But the second half, he just didn't look that great. And, you know, maybe... Maybe the penalty miss it, uh, hurt, uh, uh, demoralized him because once he missed the penalty, he probably shouldn't have taken off. Because we know Vinicius is a very emotional player, you know, and it's just things weren't going his way. You know, Venezuela goes down to 10 men uh, for uh, provoking Vinicius there, I believe. You can see in the image here. And then uh, the sprinklers were <laughs> turning on the 94th minute. It was crazy. And yeah, I mean, that's just how the game ended. And for Dory Paul in particular, man, why is Esteban not coming on? I, I don't understand why Esteban didn't come mind-boggling to me he didn't come on and yeah i mean i just think for results as i said man they drop points here but hey at least they're still unbeaten um against venezuela venezuela is one of the few nations to, one, of, one of the few nations to have never beat brazil ever the welcome qualifiers and it's an incredible achievement for brazil but it's gonna be disappointing for them because they feel like this was a game we could have won had Vinicius converted as penalty but that's how it is and for venezuela man they keep their world cup subs alive but man, I need to see more from. I need to see more goal scoring from Venezuela because I'm sorry, just Rondon alone is giving enough. And I know Segovia scored the brilliant goal, but that was just individual brilliance, individual brilliance. And yeah, so that's how the game ended. Moving to the next one we got here is Paraguay two, Argentina one. Now, Argentina, I don't think should be a worried, even though they lost this game. I think Argentina is still in a great position to qualify. And Latal Martinez scored that goal, man. Latal Martinez has been turning up, man. This guy has been one of RJ's most informed players. And you just saw how good he was at Copa America. He's now turning up the qualifiers. Back-to-back -back goals for him. And the Paraguay, man. Credit to them. They got that beautiful goal. Sanabria there with a bicycle kick there. And then Alderete scored that header there in the second half. He probably should have been sent off in this game. He made a, he, he made a reckless challenge, I believe, in the first half. Um, and yeah, RJ just looked a bit shell-shocked. Uh, they just didn't really offer that much going forward and it's just kind of sad because besides the less horrible i think that was the only shot on sorry gonna find a mistake like it was just crazy to me um i believe a uh, came on didn't really impact the game and for argentina man i just think it was just one of those days where i think paraguay just wanted to i think argentina were a bit kind of a bit too naive and a bit too complacent um and i just think paraguay just wanted it more and desperately and you know another fun fact for you guys last time paraguay made the world cup they defeated both brazil Argentina in the qualifiers and now they're doing it here again in this edition. So, shout out to Paraguay, man, for doing that. And I'm pretty confident that Paraguay is going to qualify for the next World Cup. I'm pretty confident with these two victories, they have put themselves in a great position to qualify. Next up, we got Ecuador 4, uh, Bolivia nil. Ecuador has destroyed Bolivia. Bolivia were no match in this game. One of the center backs for Bolivia made a stupid, stupid red, a stupid red card. One of the dumbest red cards I've seen in my life. He basically puts his hand in the middle of the box. I forgot the guy's name. He makes a stupid red card. And Ecuador took a full advantage. Uh, Enter Valencia balled out. He got one goal and two assists. That's all. Plata also scored as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just a fantastic win for Ecuador. Looking fantastic. They were so dumb. I think they had 29 shots, 15 on target. They completely dominated the game and fully deserved the win. And I'm, I'm glad to see Ecuador really convert their chance because Ecuador is a team that just don't score enough goals, guys. But this game... They absolutely dominate Bolivia, but, you know, it shouldn't be that surprising. Uh, you know, it's Bolivia at the end of the day. Uh, Mianda scored the goal. There's 61st minute, I forgot to mention. Yeah. Fantastic win for Ecuador. 
really, really good win. And um, it's good to see them continue their unbeaten streak. Um, well, not unbeaten streak, but continue their good form at home, should I say. Uruguay 3, Colombia 2. Uruguay, man. Critical win for Uruguay. Uruguay finally gets a win. They needed this win. And Uruguay were so bad. Well, coming into this game, Uruguay were four games winless, guys. And they hadn't won a game post Copa America. The fact that Uruguay did this in this style was crazy. Because it was a, such an end-to-end -end game. It was such a chaotic game. It was a back-and-forth game. Colombia took the lead there. Great goal there for Quintero. You can maybe say Rocha should have done better there. The Davis of Sanchez there with the, it was a bit of unlucky for him to score the own goal there. And Nagore scoring the goal there. I believe that was his debut as well. So shout out to him for scoring on his debut. And then, um, then Gomez scores. And then uh, in 96 minute. Great cross in there from Mojica. It was a bit of a scramble in the box. And then Uruguay scored the last minute goal to break Colombian hearts. And I think for Uruguay, they needed this win and they got a critical win. And as for Colombia, I just think they were a bit unlucky. Maybe at times they're a bit too uh, attack minded. Maybe they should have been more pragmatic. But at the same time, though, they were so close to holding on to get the draw there. So I think for Colombia, I just think it was just unlucky. I don't think Colombia should be worried. Obviously, Colombia, I still think they're a great position to qualify. And I think for Uruguay, they have not put themselves in a bad, great position. I think Uruguay have shown uh, sounds great, and I think this is a critical win for Uruguay to keep their hopes alive. And uh, then the final game we got here, it is Peru nil, Chile nil. Oh my Jesus, this was such a trash game, guys. Uh, this this game is the mid derby. When I look at the derbies, this is the mid derby. This is the battle of the mids, battle of battle of the mids. Because I'm sorry, th this game was so trash. This game was so trash, and Chile. They were better in the first half. I'll give you that. I think Chile dominated the first half. They were the much better team that had nine shots, four on sorry, 61% possession. As much as I say that, though, Peru also were pretty good in the first half. They had six shots, three on sorry, but I just think Peru and Chile slightly edged them out. But the second half, though, Chile just completely fell asleep. Peru dominated seven shots, three on target. And Peru almost won the game with the last minute penalty being called, but, it was, but the pen wasn't given. And for Peru, as I said, man, I don't know why Paulo Guerrero is still starting. In the year 2024, Paulo Guerrero, at the age of 40 years old, is still starting for your national team. It's absolutely disgraceful. He shouldn't be starting. And for Chile, you have Arturo Vidal that's still starting. You got Varga that's still starting. When these guys are past their prime, I mean, it's just ridiculous for Chile, man. They have to start using younger players. And for for Chile, as I said, I think they'll be the more the happier of the two teams. They got the draw there, which is good for them. And I think for Peru. It's pretty much over. I think it's pretty much over for both teams, but I think Chile have now put themselves in maybe a little bit more chance than Peru, and I think I'm, it's fair to say I think Peru will probably finish the last team at the table. So that is it for match day 11. Let's move on over to match day 12. Wow. Bolivia 2, Paraguay 2. Shout out to uh, Paraguay. Because what they did in this game was commendable. Because remember, guys, this is a way at the, um, the altitude. This is a way at the um, El Al Alato. And the fact that they were able to get a result in this game, coming from behind, is absolutely phenomenal. Because Bolivia took the lead there. Great, great goal there from Baca. Amazing goal there. I think also, okay, Bolivia is one way traffic. They're probably going to win this game by a uh, big margin. You know, they had five shots through on Sorry, They missed three big chances. But the second half, though, was crazy. Al Marion um, scores. It was a great, great goal there. 71st minute. You can see a celebration there. And a clumsy challenge there for Paraguay to give Bolivia the lead. I think it was a penalty that was given. And obviously, up step the guy himself, um, uh, Tesoros, to give them the lead 2-1. He took it so, okay, Bolivia's going to now hold on for this win. Uh, then Enciso comes off the bench and the full, at halftime and scores a beautiful Galazzo. That is an incredible goal Enciso scored at the 91st minute to equalize that for Paraguay. And the game ends 1-1. Uh, I'm sorry, 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two draw. And I think it's a great point for Paraguay on the road. And for Bolivia, this is a big point drop. This is a big point drop because they probably, they, they're going to be kicking themselves high. We have almost won this game at home. And you know how critical it would have been considering Venezuela draw points? This would have been massive for them. But, you know, it is what it is. That's how the game ended in a 2-2 two, two draw. And I think for Paraguay, it's a set, man. Looking fantastic. Gustavo Alfaro still unbeaten. And Paraguay, man, they're looking like the real team. Moving to the next game we got here RJ 1, Peru 0. Argentina, man. I don't know how they didn't win this game by more than a one goal margin because RJ missed so many chances in this game. That You know how many shots they had in this game, guys? They had 10 shots through on target. Peru absolutely offered nothing. Two shots and nada on target. Absolutely nothing. 
basically, basically they did nothing, and Peru were just basically parking the bus. They were just basically playing for a draw, and RJ were trying their absolute best to try to win this game, but it just wasn't to be. Uh, they had to work so hard for the game. They have created a lot of chances in that first, second half in particular. I don't know how they didn't score more goals. And Latar Martinez, man. Messi plays a beautiful assist to Latar, and Latar scores a banger. It was a beautiful goal, a beautiful acrobatic finish there for Latar Martinez to make it 1 0. And they should have they should have, they should have scored more goals. Um, and with this goal, by the way, Latar is now equal. Diego Maradona with the amount of goals he scored for RG, which is absolute insanity. He's now in the top five RG goal scores of all time. And it's absolutely phenomenal. And as for Peru, it's pretty much over for them. Not really much surprising there. And I think for Lionel Messi, he's now got the joint most assists all in international world tie with Landon Donovan. He'll probably surpass Landon Donovan. Um, because obviously, you know, Landon Donovan's retired. So, yeah, shout out to Lionel Messi for, the, for that achievement. Shout out to Lionel Messi and... Um, Latar for those uh, two incredible achievements. So we're gonna move on to the next game we got here. It is um, Colombia nil Ecuador one. Wow, Ecuador, fantastic win for them on the road. And Ener Valencia, man, wow, that was a beautiful goal there. Because the thing is, Ener Valencia is a great striker, but he's just not consistent. He's not a consistent striker, and the fact that Ecuador got this win on the road is absolutely phenomenal. And we know how difficult Colombia is. Colombia is to play against, especially at the crib. And Franco Guerrero got the assist. Colombia had a little bit of miscue there at the back line, making the horrible mistakes there at the back to give them to allow Ecuador to get the goal there. Uh, then Hincapié uh, gets the red card there, st um, denies Cordoba there, and Cordoba, man, oh my god, this guy was so bad. I mean, the amount of chances Cordoba missed in particular was crazy. I'm sorry, I don't know how Cordoba played almost a full game. And it's actually crazy to me that Duran uh, Duran didn't start this game because so I think Duran is much better than him. And Colombia came so close to equalizing, but they just couldn't do. Got Lean Desmer with seven saves. And it's there's a reason why Ecuador is the best defense in South America. Ecuador have the best defense. They've only conceded four goals across 12 games. You know how amazing that is? Four goals conceded. That's so insane, guys. That's actually That just shows how good Ecuador are as a unit. They defended so well. Colombia, man, I don't know how they did win this game. I just think they were unlucky. And I think for Colombia, it's just a, maybe, I think it's just been unluckiness on the day because I think Ecuador, honestly, are a good team. And I think, like I said, for Colombia, they're going to obviously qualify. May, but maybe it won't be as, like, comfortable as we think. And for Ecuador, man, fantastic win for them. They've, they're the only team to get six points in this window, guys. Six points. That is absolute insanity for Ecuador. So shout out to Ecuador for doing that. Um... And yeah, I just think for Colombia, man, it's just unfortunate because they really should have won this game, man. Ecuador basically did nothing after the goal. They basically parked the bus, and that's just how the game ended. So, Colombia, man, it's it's disappointing for their street, uh, home streak to end, but it is what it is, man. That's just how football is. Moving to the next one I got here is Chile 4, Venezuela 2. Chile, man, fantastic win for them. And I think the big talking point for this game is that Capita guy. Capita. Zapata, man, what a, what a performance for him. Two goals and an assist on the day. He was fantastic. And for Venezuela, man, this is shameful. After getting a draw against Brazil, I would think to myself, okay, Venezuela, you can't get a result in this game. I know what the sad thing is. Venezuela were 2-1 up in this game. Great goal there for Sabarino. And then, um, sorry, Ramirez. So, sorry, Sabarino scored the goal. And then Ramirez scored the goal there to make it 2-1. And then Chile got that goal there. And then they just basically collapsed after the own goal there from Rincon. Um, and Chile basically took full advantage. Venezuela just had nothing to offer. And it's just, it's just crazy to me how Venezuela are like this. Because I'm noticed with Venezuela is that they're a team that can't play well for the full game. They have like good lapses, but they can't play well for a full game. And that's really worrying because Venezuela haven't won a game since beating Chile 3-0 last year. They haven't won a game since then, and we have six games to go, and Bolivia is now one point above them. Now, thankfully for them, they do have to play Bolivia at home, and I think that's going to be a critical game for them in the sense that maybe they can get um, points there, but they need to start winning their games, man. They need to start winning their games at home. And as for Chile, as I said, it's a great win for them, huge win for them, but I still think Chile is not going to qualify for the playoffs because if you look at their next couple of games, it's pretty brutal. Like Paraguay away. Ecuador at home, Argia at home, Bolivia away, Brazil away, and Uruguay at home. I mean, it's it's Joe over. So I, I don't see Chile competing. 
So for me, it's going to be between Venezuela and Bolivia for the playoff spot. It's going to be very fascinating. And for Venezuela, man, they collapsed in this game. Man. They, they absolutely collapsed. And it's a shame because I really want them to make the World Cup, guys. I really am hoping they do it. But they're going to make, if they're, if they're going to qualify, it's going to be through the hard way. Let's put it this way. But yeah, shout out to Chile for getting the win. And then the final game we got here, it is Brazil uh, 1, Uruguay 1. Uruguay there. The first half, man, I think Brazil uh, were much better. Uh, Brazil were much better. Uncle didn't even get a single shot on start. And Vinicius Jr., man, he had the great chance in the first half. He should have probably scored that. Um, indeed. And then Uruguay, man, they opened the score in there. Just, you know, it was, no, sorry, it was the second half. Vinicius had that chance there in the second half. And just a few minutes later, Valverde scores a beautiful goal. Valverde scores a banger to make it 1 0. Um, and to make it 1 0. And so, okay, how will Brazil respond? Jerson, man, scored a beautiful banger there to make it 1-1. And that's how the game ended, you know. And I think Uruguay, for me, were pretty defensive in this game. They were playing in the counterattack. And you could just tell that Brazil have a hard time breaking down these low-block teams, you know, especially these kind of low-block teams. And I think Uruguay set up perfectly in transition to, to get at the Brazil defense. And I just think for Uruguay, man, you have to go credit to Bielsa for doing his homework, for tactically studying this team. And you could say that Brazil were the better team and they should have won. But at the end of the day, as, as good as Brazil were, the stats were pretty even. And when you look at the amount of shots, on right. Both teams had three and two shots, but Brazil had 18 shots. With 18 shots, you only get three on target. It's crazy. Brazil had to fix their goal scoring issues. Um, and yeah, I mean, for um, Duarval in the particular, man, um, you finally give Esteval more minutes, but I mean, only 20 minutes? It's crazy. He should have probably played more minutes. Um, indeed, and for Vinicius Jr., he didn't have a good game. I'm sorry, Vinny was pretty awful. He didn't have a good game. He got three shots off target. He didn't get a single shot on target. You can tell he's trying, but he just isn't working. It's just not as working as well as we see at Real Madrid. And allegations are coming through, guys. Is Vinny a system merchant? Let me know in the comments below, guys, what you guys think. Is Vinny a system merchant? I'll let you guys answer that question. I'm not going to give you guys an answer to that one because I honestly don't know. So, hope you guys did enjoy um, this uh Recap, let's just look at the table real quick before round up. So as you can see right guys, this is the table right here. RG is first, Uruguay second, Ecuador third, and Colombia fourth. And Colombia, we would say, are the second best team in South America. They're not even second right now on the table. They're the fourth. Although to be fair, it's it's still pretty tight. It's only like one point behind. So I wouldn't worry for Colombia. Brazil fifth, Paraguay sixth, Bolivia and Venezuela. So you can see there's like clear separation. RG have a five point lead at the top of the table. Even with three losses. That's actually pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, I'm looking at the table right here, guys. I feel like the top four is almost settled. And I, you would expect Brazil to qualify, Paraguay to qualify. But now it's a matter of who's going to play, play us with team, Bolivia and Venezuela, because that's what it's going to come down to. And I believe Bolivia and Venezuela are going to play each other next. And I think Venezuela have to win that game. And it's at Venezuela Stadium. So if Venezuela don't win that game, I think they're in trouble. So for basically what's going to come down to, in my opinion, for that playoff spot is basically the home form. Whichever team picks up more points at home, between Bolivia and Venezuela, will qualify in the playoff spot. So, best of luck to all of these countries, man. I hope you guys did enjoy my South America World Cup qualifiers review. And yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If there's any major struggle points, please let me know. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.